Okay, hi everybody. Um, thanks for watching this. This is the first lecture for the FRC Controls Classroom that I'm going to be running. Um, I'm going to be trying to record it all in one take, kind of in real time. Um, so please bear with me. I have not done this on video before. So to give some background about myself, my name is Connor Worley. I work as a software engineer for Dropbox. Um, and I was a student on the Holy Cows from 2011 through the uh, 2014 seasons. Um, so I went to High Tech High for high school. Uh, since then, I've been a mentor for various teams. And um, this past season, Infinite Recharge was my 10th in FRC. So before we get into the classroom, I kind of wanted to talk about what controls is. And in the context of FRC, it's the combination of software and electronics to make our robots move. Uh, so this class will be focusing more on the software than on the electronics. Um, and you don't need any knowledge of programming to get started. We're going to start from um, complete zero, and we're going to build up from there, uh, kind of stacking knowledge on top of each other like a pyramid. And so the final goals for this class are one, uh, the knowledge to pass sort of a college-level intro to computer science class, uh, but more importantly, the ability to write some really high-quality robot code for the upcoming seasons. And so this is sort of the example of like the pyramid of knowledge that we want to build, where robot code is at the top of that pyramid. So if you're a student taking this class, I have some expectations for you. Uh, the first one is to complete all of assigned readings. These are going to be like blog posts, um, web pages, some excerpts from textbooks. Um, I'm going to try to keep them less than 100 pages a week, and most weeks it'll be way less than that. Uh, complete all assigned quizzes. These are going to be answering practice problems from the readings, and they're meant to be 100% doable. They're not supposed to be super difficult. Um, don't cheat. Don't plagiarize code from the internet. Um, there's not much of a point in doing this since there's really no penalty for getting a wrong answer here. And completing this class doesn't guarantee you a leadership position or anything like that. So there's really no good reason to um, just copy and paste code from the internet or uh, share answers with other students. Um, it's good to be constructive and um, sort of help each other out when you're struggling, but please don't verbatim copy answers. Yeah, so a quick word on reading and textbooks. Um, at least when I was a student at High Tech High, um, there was not much in the way of textbook reading. And I understand that it can be a bit dry and not the most exciting reading, but it's definitely going to be an essential skill when you get to college. Um, you're going to have to learn how to study from a textbook, whether you like it or not. Um, so even if it's not the most exciting, I think it is a valuable skill to pick up now. So if you're working on something for this class and you get stuck, uh, do ask questions in the controls channel in Slack. And give as much detail as you can. So if you're trying to do something, what were you trying to do? What did you expect it to do? What actually happened? And when you're doing this, it's good to include screenshots and copy and paste any output from the computer. Don't omit information. This is going to make it really hard for the person debugging to actually help you out. Um, and don't DM me, because it's useful for other people in Slack to see what's going on in controls, and they could benefit from seeing the answers if they have the same question. It is OK to ping me uh, at CWorley in the controls channel. And it is OK to DM me if you have a question that you feel is truly private. Um, yeah, I have also included some additional reading about how to ask questions the smart way. I'll send out these slides later. So for this first lecture, we're just going to be getting computers set up. So I'll be doing Windows first, and then I'll be doing Mac OS. Um, if you're using Linux or something else, I assume you already know what you're doing. Um, but for Windows and Mac OS, I'll be going over the setup in real time. So if you have a desktop or a laptop that you want to use with you, now would be a good time to grab it and start following along. So I'm going to head over to my Windows machine here. And the first thing we need to do is turn on developer mode. 
So if you go into the start menu and just type developer, we should see developer settings pop up. So we'll open that up. And we want to click developer mode here. Toggle that on. It's going to ask if we really want to, and we'll say yes. And so this is going to take two or three minutes to enable developer mode. Uh, there are going to be a few points in this Windows setup that will take a while. Um, hopefully it's not too boring. Hopefully you're following along with a laptop and um, it's sort of matching the pace in real time. Uh, so yeah, please bear with me. Okay, and it looks like developer mode did finish installing, so we can close this out, and the next thing we need to do is go back to the start menu, and we want to look up uh, turn Windows features on or off, and open that up. It's going to take a second for this list of features to populate. And we want to scroll down all the way to the bottom, and we want to check Windows subsystem for Linux, and then hit OK. It's going to take a minute here looking for some files. And it's going to ask if we want it to restart now or restart later. And we'll hit restart now. And this will take a few more minutes.
Okay, and it looks like we're getting back into Windows here. So at this point we have enabled developer mode and we've also turned on the Windows subsystem for Linux. Um, and now we actually need to install a copy of Linux that we can use with the subsystem. So that'll be what we'll do next. So I'll just give Windows a second to get comfortable and then open up a web browser. And once the uh, browser is open, we'll need to download uh, Linux from a specific link. And I'll type that in in a second. So that link is aka.ms slash WSL dash Ubuntu. That's U-B-U-N-T-U dash 1804. 1804. And so this is going to say, what do you want to do with this file? And we'll open it with the app installer. Cool, that downloaded pretty quick, and it should be opening soon. And it's asking, do you really want to install Ubuntu? And yes, we do. And we do want to launch when ready. So we'll click Install. and it's launching for us, and it's into another installer here. This one will probably take the longest out of all of the steps so far, uh, so just give this a few more minutes, and um, it will ask us for some information once it's ready. Uh, in the meantime, I'm gonna try to make the font size here a little bigger so that uh, you can see a bit better. You know what, it may not want to do that while it's installing, so I'll come back to that later. Oh, never mind, here it is.
Okay, and it looks like it's finished uh, installing Ubuntu. So it's going to ask us for a username here. I'm just going to enter my usual username. And it's also going to ask us for a password. And when you're typing in your password here, it's not going to display it, but just know that it is keeping track of what you're entering. And it's going to ask for the password again. And it'll drop you into this sort of looking window. And so once you're here, you can just type in all lowercase, no spaces, who am I? And it'll say the username you just entered. So if you get to that point, that means that everything has worked so far and you've successfully installed uh, Ubuntu on your Windows machine. So I am going to shut down Windows here and then I'll bring up the Mac setup. Okay, and bringing up the Mac setup. And this will just take a few seconds to come back online. I'm doing this all on one machine, so I'm using virtual machines. Okay, and here we are in Mac OS. And I'll see if my cursor wants to move, and here we are. Um, so it's a little bit simpler in Mac OS. Uh, we're going to go up to Spotlight in the top right, and we're going to type in Terminal. And we'll open up the Terminal program. And I'm going to try to make this font size nice and big as well. And we won't have to choose a username or password here. It's already tied to your username on the computer to begin with. Uh, so if you type in that same command from Windows, who am I, with no spaces and all lowercase, it's going to say the same thing. It's going to say your username here. So installing the Windows subsystem for Linux um, kind of makes Windows and Mac OS more similar, although they're not exactly the same. Um, when you're using Ubuntu on Windows, you'll be able to share some of the commands like who am I and others that we're going to cover in future lessons with uh, Mac OS. But there are differences. They're not the same. Um, However, we're going to try to keep them as similar as possible for the class. Um, so yeah, that's it for Mac OS. So thanks for watching this far, and thanks for bearing with the Windows part. Um, so what I'd like you to do next is go to the Controls channel in Slack and make this introductory post so that I can get to know you better of what your name is, what your class slash graduation year is, um, your level of programming experience so far, um, whether you're using Windows, Mac OS, Linux, um, and any specific goals or things you might want to learn about for the class. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching.